Good day, gents. Um, today we are going to be having a look at the um, cylinder and we would like to obviously draw a left side view of the cylinder but that's very very basic as when I look at the front view of my cylinder it looks like a rectangle now if I had to look from the left hand side I'll also be able to see that same rectangle now the difference in this is going to be for us to go ahead and include a cutting plane and to be able to show what that cutting plane or the effect of it will be on the existing rectangle in my left side view. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and go and divide my circle into 12 equal parts. Now I do that because the circle doesn't have too many reference points. If you can see the very widest areas over here would be a reference point to show how wide this object would be but it definitely won't be able to give me anything more than that so I go ahead and I use a different color in this case just for the video project my circle into 12 30 degree segments so I use my 60 degree set square and the 30 degrees To draw lines through the center of the circle and then I use these points over here on my circumference to project up to my front view and my left side view as reference points so the more reference points I have ideally the more accurate my curve will be uh, we'll see that in a moment so I also like using numbers so I'm going to number them three Four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, and therefore the seven and one have already been projected. And I also like numbering the bottom or the base of my cylinder and the top base of my cylinder. And I go ahead and I project all these lines up to the top base so that, that it goes through the bottom base and the top base and also through the cutting plane. I'd have to include a center line through that to show that it is a cylinder as well in my front view. Alright. So I'm going to label this 12 and 2, 11 and 3, 10 and 4, 9 and 5, 8 and 6. And then I do the same at the top, 8 and 6, 9 and 5, 10 and 4, 11 and 3, 12 and 2. Now what concerns me is where it actually intersects with my cutting plane. So I'm just going to put a little dot here just to indicate them for you on the video. And all these points will indicate cut points that I'm going to refer to in my left side view as well. So I've got cut point 1. On line 12 and 12, I'll have cut point 12 and line 2 and 2, I'll have 2. So therefore, this will be cut point 11 and 3. This one will be cut point 10 and 4. And this one will be cut point 9 and 5. The next one, cut point 8 and 6. And the last one is cutting on 7. Alright, so now I go ahead, do some more of the hard work. I project all this information across to my 45 degree line. You'll notice that they also pass through two points on the circumference at a time and I'll be using them in a moment. You 
can see that all the hard work will pay off and that this drawing is actually drawn in a very short time. Right, I have number four. I go ahead, I do the same numbering process, number 10 at the other end, three and five, two and six, one and seven, 12 and eight, 11 and nine. And so I do the same at the top, 10, 11 and 9, 12 and 8, 1 and 7, 2 and 6, 3 and 5, and then 4 at the very end. Now this is where life becomes easy. I know that when I project number 1 on the ground across, 1 and 1 will meet over there. 12 and 2, let's project that across. All my cut points, project them across. All the hard work. Like so. And all we now need to do is make sure that the numbers land together. So 12 projected across and 12 will meet over here. 2 and 2 above it. Next cut point, 11 and 11, 3 and 3, next cut point, 10 and 10, and I think you can already start seeing where we're going with this, and the shape of our um, profile. Next cut point, 9 and 5. Eight and six. And then seven, which lands up back in the middle again. We already know that we are cutting away the top portion, so I'm left with this portion at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the bottom portion stays behind. So I'm going to go link the bottom to the base. The widest points. And the more I draw, the more it feeds my brain with some images and I'll be able to understand it a lot easier. And now I would like to show you guys how to go about using your French curve. You could be using a flexi curve at the same time, but this is where my French curve comes in. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to go and line up these dots smoothly as possible as many as I can and what I've done is I've gone ahead and made some markings on the on my French curve already so let's make sure that we get a proper curve now you some at times won't be able to get a very very nice curve you might have to join three at a time let's see how this one's going to work out for us looks like we're going to have these three join Like so. And then I'm going to mark it off on my curve. Because remember the left hand side should equal the right hand side. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip it over. So that I get the other side exactly the same. Alright. Now, I can go ahead and do the other side, so I'm going to actually, due to space constraints, turn my whole T-board around, and try and use the same at the bottom, and it looks like we might have a slight different profile at the bottom, so let's try and find the right arc.
This looks like it could work. I'm going to go and try and use that again. So I mark it off on there. And I turn it upside down for the other side. And I try and keep that curve nice and constant. So I don't want to have a little divot in my curve at the bottom. I want to have it nice and rounded. And then we simply need to get these three over here nicely in contact with one another with the necessary curve. So we're going to try and find a curve for that. And also if that doesn't work, you can just go one at a time. But it looks like we've found something that works for us over here. Okay, nice and neatly, I'm going to try and get it to blend in with the next curve there so we don't have any divots. So I'm going to mark that off from there to there. And I'm going to try and use that same curve on the other end. And if you're accurate in your drawing, you should be able to do that. Remember, you can manipulate your pencil slightly. So here I'm going to try and push it as far close to, the, to it as possible, to that circle over there. I think you guys get the point. My point might not be so accurate, so at this point in time I'm not going to be that accurate. And that's going to be my result. But yours will be quite accurate. You'll try and get it to work for you. All right, now we just need to go and cross hatch. Put your T square back on the board. And a nice little trick is if you use the length of one of the lines and you slide it along, you can see that you can take that line that you just drawn to the tip of that line and it'll give you some equal distances between your cross hatching lines or your section lines at 45 degrees Right, and that's what your left side view will look like. You'll also call that your sectional left side view. So when I look at it from this side over here, I'm just going to draw my little eyeball. When I look at it from this side over here and I haven't got this top portion on it anymore, you will see this object over here. Look at the, the funny oval shape, okay, elongated circular shape, isn't it? So that's what you're going to end up with with its sides. Remember the top has been cut off, so therefore you won't extend anything beyond this point over here. And um, the top view now, however, needs to show that it's sectioning from one side to the other. So I'm cutting on or from point 7, and I'm going right around... 8 and 6, 9 and 5, 10 and 4, 11 and 3, 12 and 2, all the way to the other side of the circle, which means this entire shape here will be cross-hatched. And now that I've done that, I'm going to label this one a sectional top view. All right. If I've given this, obviously this is going to be the vertical trace, VT, vertical trace, because it's in the vertical plane. If I had a trace running through my top view, my top view is obviously sitting in the horizontal plane, 
and therefore if I had a cutting plane through my top view and, and indicated in my top view it will be called a horizontal trace because it's in my horizontal plane. Right guys, I think that uh, will wrap it up for you nicely um, and I hope you guys have enjoyed the video.